Hello and welcome to Physics at Delaware Tech. My name is Dr. Mark Taylor. I think we can all agree that online learning or distance learning is not exactly the optimal way to take a college course. Many of you are not completely comfortable with online learning and that's quite understandable. Uh, hopefully we can get back to something relatively normal relatively soon. I strongly recommend that you take notes while viewing this and the other videos, especially the lecture videos for the course, but the vast majority of the information in this video can be found in one of two reference documents uh, that are located in the week one lesson plan announcement. The Welcome to Online Physics reference document and the Policies and Expectations document. The Welcome document tells you where to, everything's located along with contact information for a wide variety of support services offered at Delaware Tech. And the policies document tells you the rules and regulations, most of which are set by the campus or by the Dell Tech Science Department. Uh, print these out in case you forget them or miss something during the orientation videos. Uh, while you can just read parts of the welcome document as you need them, it's strongly recommend you read the entire policies and expectations document to understand the Dell Tech policies and the Science Department policies for this class. As you know, this is an introductory course, and like any introductory course, much of the material is going to be new to you. Uh, I know that some of you have had high school physics, but for many of you, uh, you didn't have any or it was years ago, so we're going to assume this is your first exposure to physics material. Uh, the course is, however, a college course, so it's a bit faster paced than you might have been used to in high school. Uh, if you're taking this class in the summer, it's an accelerated 10-week session instead of the usual 15-week session during the spring or fall, so the pace is even faster still. In any case, it's important for you to do your absolute best to keep to the course schedule in terms of watching the lecture videos, as well as submitting the labs, uh, problem sets, exams, etc., on time. Now, obviously, online learning is not the best situation for most students or for instructor, instructors, for that matter. Uh, for most of us, face-to-face -face learning certainly is the preferred way to go. I'm also aware that, that all of you have your own life responsibilities and the pandemic certainly doesn't help with that situation. Uh, now, despite the many issues with online learning, I hope this format presents you with at least one advantage over taking in-person on-campus courses. And I'm referring to the fact that this online course uses asynchronous learning, which might be beneficial to you. Uh, if you haven't heard the term asynchronous, asynchronous refers to the, to the fact that the video lectures are not in sync with real time. In other words, you can watch them anytime you want, 24-7. This is not a synchronous course in which we'd meet at a specific time together on Zoom or in the classroom a couple times a week. Remember, you are absolutely required to watch these videos because we're not in a physical classroom, and these videos are your lecture videos. You can watch the videos anytime, so it's your responsibility to follow each weekly lesson plan and watch those videos uh, following the schedule that's posted. The overall course schedule can be found on the contents page in D2L. I strongly recommend that you follow that schedule. The schedule links you to all the weekly lecture video responsibilities, the uh, associated presentations, lab assignments, problem sets, exam assessments, etc., along with all the due dates for each item. In addition, each week you'll receive a weekly lesson plan uh, announcement uh, on the announcements with active links and reminders to all the assignments and assessments due for that particular week. Now, you'll hear me say this throughout the semester, it's important for you to take advantage of the many resources available to you. If you need help, if you're struggling with any material, if it's science related, technical, or even administrative, please uh, contact me immediately by email, mg.taylor, it's mg.taylor, at dtcc.edu, or come to our office hours, or come to the virtual tutoring center, either with me or one of the other uh, tutors. Well, there are multiple science tutors available, there are multiple physics tutors available, including myself, at the virtual tutoring center six days a week. Tutoring Center opens uh, at 9.30 a.m. on Mondays through Fridays. The center closes at 7.30 p.m. on Mondays through Thursdays, but it closes a little earlier on Fridays at 4.30 p.m. So 9.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. for first four days, and it closes at 4.30 on Friday. It's also open on Saturdays, but the hours are, are shorter still. They open at 10.30 a.m. and close at 2.30 p.m. 
I'm assigned different hours every semester, so I'll post my hours as soon as I know them. The tutoring center is closed on Sundays, school holidays, and some special times when Dell Tech may authorize a shutdown. As for office hours, they're by Zoom, and I'll do my best to keep a regular online office hour schedule and keep them open even during holidays, even during school closings for any reason, assuming I have internet. Uh, Zoom links and schedules for both the office hours and the virtual tutoring center are posted in the opening welcome announcement that you would have gotten, uh, which you'll see when you open up the, the course in D2L. Uh, Zoom addresses for both office hours and the virtual tutoring center also appear in my email signature at the bottom of all my emails. Uh, both office hours and the tutoring center are completely optional. Uh, you can pop in to either one at any time during the scheduled period. You don't need an appointment, but you're more than welcome to make one for either in case you want to make sure I'm available to talk with you uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I have more than one class meeting at my office hours and with more than one topic, so if you want to make sure it's just for you, schedule something with me. If none of those times work out for you, you can meet with other tutors at the Virtual Tutoring Center, or if you still want to meet with me, just send me an email with a couple possible times to get together and we'll meet by Zoom. Assume we use my office hours Zoom link uh, if, I'm not, if I'm not actually scheduled at the Virtual Tutoring Center at that time. If I'm at the Virtual Tutoring Center, obviously come, come to that, that Zoom link. Remember, this is your chance to ask questions, make comments, or just scream your frustrations. It's your time. Please take advantage of it. All right. So uh, in other videos or other uh, messages in the past, uh, I've given messages about something called the never attended policy. And the never attended policy just changed uh, recently, like in a couple weeks ago. So uh, I'm going to describe the new policy for the Dover Terry Campus Science Department. And this states that each student must have some contact with the instructor during each of the first two weeks of the spring or fall semester or twice during the first week of the, of the shortened summer semester. This means submitting one assignment, graded or ungraded, by the first Friday of the semester and a, another one that's graded by the second Friday of the semester. Okay, so you have to, two assignments. One of them can be ungraded or graded in the first week by Friday, and the second one has to be graded by the second Friday. If class contact is not made with the instructor, meaning me, uh, twice during that two-week period in the spring or fall or in the one-week period of the summer, instructors are required to report that student as, quote, never attended. When the, when the student is reported to the system as never attended, that student is immediately dropped from the course with a U grade for unofficial withdrawal, which, you, uh, which is something you absolutely want to avoid. The U grade results in having to pay back your financial aid, getting a failing grade towards your GPA, and possibly even preventing you from re-enrolling in the next semester. As I've already mentioned, for week one, you could submit either an ungraded or a graded assessment to fulfill your requirement for attendance. The easiest way to do this is to just complete your student questionnaire, which you can find uh, links to in either the week one uh, announcement page or the course schedule page, both on D2L. Just click on the student questionnaire. You're going to download the file, complete it, and then submit it. And that will be good for your first week as long as you get it in by the first Friday. Alternatively, you could just log on to our Zoom-based office hours or to my hours at the campus's Zoom-based virtual tutoring center and then say hi and tell me about your career plans and we'll fill out your student questionnaire together. Uh, I'll, I'll type in the data for you and that will fulfill your first week's requirement. Now, you could also do one of the graded assessments instead, that's fine. For the second week, it has to be a graded assessment, and that might include uh, either a problem set or a lab, or in some cases, a quiz, and any one of those by the second Friday will fulfill your attendance requirement for the second week of the course. Now, if you're taking this course as an accelerated 10-week course, or when we go eventually to seven-week courses, you'll need to fulfill both requirements within the first week. In other words, by the very first Friday to fulfill uh, the attendance requirement and avoid a, a uh, notation of never attended. Now, you can still get a U grade in the course 
by just stopping work, in other words, ghosting the class. Dell Tech policy states that if you have a failing grade that is due to inactivity in the class, in other words, you stop taking exams, you stop submitting labs and problem sets, again, we are absolutely required to assign you a U grade instead of the simple F grade for the course. It's always better to drop the course before drop date than to stay enrolled and stop submitting work in the class. So keep your eye on when drop date is each semester. Now I'd like to shift gears for just a second and talk to you about a very important Dell Tech Science Department policy. Obviously you need a passing grade that rounds up to a 70 or more to pass the course. In other words, a 69.5 or, or higher. Uh, while many students are aware of that, uh, many students might not be aware that you also need a passing grade in both your lab grade alone and your lecture grade alone. The lecture grade is a weighted average of your exams, problem sets, and in some courses, quizzes, so anything not labs. So Dell, Dell Tech policy requires that you have a passing grade of 70 for all three component grades, your overall course grade, your individual lecture grade, exams and problem sets and quizzes, and your lab component grade, all three of which you can find in your grade book for this course on D2L. Remember, this is a Dell Tech policy, so I have no discretion to change it. As an example of the policy, let's say you've aced the lab portion of the course, uh, but you have a failing lecture grade and you still have a passing grade for the course. Dell Tech dictates that you fail the entire course. Let's say you did great in your, in your exams and your problem sets, but you failed the lab portion, but your overall grade is still passing. Dell Tech requires that I fail you. I have no discretion on this. Now, in addition to this, the department policy also states that three missing lab grades, so if you just didn't turn in a lab grade three times in the spring or fall, or only two times in the summer, this will result in an automatic failing grade for the semester as well. So it's important to keep up with your labs. It's important to uh, maintain a passing average in all sections of your course. So keep your eye on the grade book. Okay, as far as uh, communication goes, my primary means of communication with students is by Dell Tech email, uh, mg.taylor. So my initials, mg.taylor at dtcc.edu. This is all posted. Uh, I generally check my email seven days a week, multiple times a day, so I should get back to you pretty quickly. Uh, as I mentioned, your weekly lesson plans are posted as announcements, but I'll also use your email to contact you directly. Make sure you check your Dell Tech email daily to avoid any mis miscommunication, and Dell Tech in general recommends that you check your Dell Tech email every day as well. If it's an emergency, you can call me or text me using my cell number, which is also uh, both in the welcome announcement and in the signature of my emails. If you have issues logging onto an exam that will close soon, or it shuts down accidentally while you're in the middle of it, that is considered an emergency. Any problems with exams, that's an emergency. Uh, if it happens, don't panic. Uh, I should be able to modify the exam criteria, including due dates to solve your issue, or give you a second chance if it's shut down too quickly in the first chance. Just text me or call me. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Don't worry, I won't hold you responsible for any system glitches. We'll figure out a solution together. Everything will be fine, and you'll get your chance to take the exam. Uh, please note that since problem set and lab answers will be posted just a couple days after the actual due date, these dates can't usually be extended by more than a couple days. So uh, I'm going to try to post answers to both the problem sets and the labs soon after they're due. So try to get those in on time. Um, okay, so just a heads up, uh, I created a chapter 00, which is before any chapter from your textbook. I call it Thinking About Physics. It's a video that's helped, uh, was made to, to help you orient to the material in this class. Uh, this video mentions some of the things that typically confuse students when taking a science course, including the use of words that scientists use a bit differently than when we speak everyday English. Uh, it also mentions the many letter abbreviations used by scientists Unfortunately, uh, they get reused for multiple scientific properties or other units of properties. Uh, for example, the capital W can mean the property of weight in one context. Uh, we actually have two other abbreviations for weight. 
Uh, but uh, it also means work in another context, the work energy. Uh, and in fact, capital W is also used as, as a unit of power, the unit watts. So it gets very confusing when you see these letters used over and over again. I can't control what history has done with these abbreviations, but I'll do the best to let you know which property or unit I'm discussing at any specific time to try to minimize confusion. It's also in your formulas page as well. Uh, this pre-chapter lecture also walks you through the concept of proportionality and inverse proportionality, which is going to come up over and over throughout the semester. Proportionality refers to the fact that if one property of matter or energy changes, another will change in response. For example, if I triple the speed that I'm traveling in a race car, but I'm going it for the same period of time, I'll also triple the distance I cover in the time. That's proportionality. One thing goes up, the speed, and the other thing will go up in response, the distance. So one goes up threefold, the other will go up threefold, uh, as long as the third thing, time, is kept constant. Uh, likewise, if I triple my speed for the same distance, I keep the distance constant, I triple my speed, that I, that I, uh, but I keep my distance constant, I'll cut my time uh, in thirds. So that's inverse proportionality. One thing's going up threefold, the speed. The other thing is going down threefold, the time. Uh, but as long as I keep the third thing constant, the distance. And we'll go over those examples more in that, in that video. I'll try to show you just how to look at an equation and immediately see in the equation what things are proportional to what and what things are inversely proportional to what. It's not particularly exciting, but it's absolutely important for your success with many calculations throughout the semester. All right, one final note before we close. Uh, you'll notice in the videos and during the Zoom tutorial sessions, I frequently talk loudly. I notice I'm doing it now. I'll bring my voice down. That is because I have moderate to severe hearing loss in the high frequency ranges. Unfortunately, that's what happens when you play drums for several decades. I tend uh, to end up talking loudly. I'll probably do it again in about a minute. Uh, my loud talking is partly due to my great passion for science, but unfortunately, it's also due to my hearing loss, and it turns out my hearing aids don't work very well for this type of hearing loss. So I apologize in advance. I assure you I'm not yelling at you. I just tend to drift into louder speech because of my damaged hearing. Uh, please let me know if my voice gets loud and it irritates you. Uh, just feel free to say, Dr. Taylor, you're getting loud. And I'll say, oh, OK, thanks for reminding me. I'll try to quiet it down, and I'll probably get louder again. You can remind me again. I Believe me, I won't take it personally. Uh, you'll actually be doing me a favor. I just don't want to give you the impression it's anything besides my partial hearing loss. All right, so to wrap up, please remember to follow each of your weekly lesson plan announcements or the overall course schedule for this class, both of which have links to everything you need to watch, read, download, complete, and submit for this class. And with that, I wish you the best of luck, and as always, please feel free to ask questions when you need assistance. Thank you very much.